Ever since people started flying FPV drones, they have wanted to put cameras on those drones to capture images that show other people the awesome things that they're doing. And that's been a big problem because a lot of the cameras we use today are heavy and they make our quads fly worse and they're expensive so that when we crash and we break them, we lose a lot of money. And that means that people are constantly searching for a lightweight, inexpensive action camera that can still capture decent enough quality images. So today we're going to be looking at the Runcam Thumb 4K, which might just be the perfect balance between lightweight, not too expensive, and good image quality. And we're going to see how it stacks up against some of these other competitors. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I've got the Runcam Thumb Pro here side by side with the Runcam 5 Orange. And the reason for that is that as near as I can tell, they're the same camera. The specs of all the resolutions and features that they support, I can't find any differences between them. The only difference I can find is that the Runcam 5 Orange has a built-in battery and charges off of USB, whereas the Runcam Thumb Pro has no battery and is powered from five volt power provided from your flight controller. I'm gonna show you a way to power it without having to wire up a battery lead to every single flight controller that you own a little later in this video. The camera is managed via the Runcam smartphone app. And if we just pick Runcam Thumb Pro here and we hit the configuration button, we can see the options. Uh, the resolutions it supports are 4K 30 all the way down to 1080p 60 and 1080p 120 if you're interested in doing some slow-mo stuff, as well as a middle ground 2.7K 60 FPS. Uh, there's a volume setting, normal and FPV. FPV just basically makes the volume quieter so that you uh, don't hear the wind rushing. The shutter can be set to auto or manual, and I leave it on auto most of the time because you need that auto exposure algorithm to avoid over or under exposing. The ISO can be changed uh, from auto or locked. I like to lock my ISO on all my action cameras at the lowest possible value, in this case ISO 100. That has the effect of increasing motion blur uh, and that is kind of like having an ND filter if you know what those are, although the camera does also support ND filters if you like to use those. Uh, there's a color style. It can be normal color or flat color. Normal is a high saturation, high contrast, and uh, flat color is for if you are looking to do color grading in your video editing program in post. And we're going to see examples of that later in the video. Here at the bottom of the screen, we can switch from video over to general settings, and we can see some more settings for the camera, including the ability to adjust saturation, exposure compensation, contrast, sharpness, metering mode, definitely don't change that. Leave that on average, at least for the type of flying we usually do. White balance, you can lock the white balance. Uh, you don't have the option to select a Kelvin value for white balance, but you can set uh, some presets there. Uh, that's also a good idea if you're doing any color grading in post. And that's about it. Now there isn't any Wi-Fi connectivity in these cameras. To apply these settings, what you do is you hit apply and it puts a QR code on screen. And then after powering up the camera, you double press the button, you point the camera at the QR code, and then it blinks and beeps and confirms that it's taken the settings. This is kind of cool because you can see here, you've got the settings down there as part of this image and you can actually save that image out and you could keep like an album of these images on your phone for common presets that you use and then quickly switch between them just by, you don't have to go through the app. You can just save the QR codes and that's kind of slick. Although uh, it does mean that you don't get live video preview like you do with higher end cameras. You can't connect via Wi-Fi and then look at what the camera is seeing. So if you need specific settings or specific framings, you're going to do a little bit of back and forth. You're going to have to take a sample video and then download that video off the camera's SD card, look at the video and go, oh, okay, the camera isn't quite how I want it. For FPV, the framing is usually pretty flexible. We just put the camera on the drone, but things like white balance, for example, that you might, or exposure that you might need to tweak to get right are going to require a little bit of back and forth. That wouldn't be the case if you had a Wi-Fi enabled camera like these two, like the GoPro or the Caddx Peanut, for example. 
The SD card is accessible through this little door on the back, and there were some complaints with the original Runcam thumb that the door would fall off during flight. They've made this one a little bit harder to open accidentally, and a little bit harder to open on purpose, but it's not that big a deal. And you can see here we've got an SD card on the inside. It takes up to, I think it's 128 gig SD card, so you hold lots of space there. You don't have to open it up to take the SD card out. When you want to get your footage off, you just plug in this USB drive here, and you can access all the footage and pull it off the card. Now let's take a look at some test footage from the Runcam Thumb Pro. And I'm flying this on the GEPRC Cinelog 2.5, a two and a half inch Cinewhoop that is perfect for a little lightweight camera like this. The first footage we're gonna see here is 1080p, 60 FPS. Nothing fancy, nothing special. We've got auto white balance and we have standard color. The only thing I've changed manually is I have manually locked the ISO at 100, which I do on pretty much all my flights because it maximizes the amount of motion blur and on bright sunny days like this, well, you're still not gonna get a ton of motion blur without an ND filter, which we'll talk about later, but I think that's best practice. Now, normally when I fly, I use a flat color profile, which gives you a little bit more ability to color grade the footage in post. And a flat color profile should give you more shadow detail. Uh, and I've also fixed the white balance on this to uh, the sunny white balance, which means that the colors stay consistent over the course of the flight, and it makes it easier to color grade. If you're not gonna be doing color grading and exposure grading in post, then you probably wouldn't do this. But I gotta say, I don't think that the flat color profile is actually doing anything. Let me show you what I mean. I picked this frame because it's got both some shadows and some bright sunny areas, and that is where a flat color profile is gonna make the most difference. Now, I'm not gonna tell you if this is flat or if this is standard color profile. Instead, compare it to this. Now this is a little bit of an unfair comparison because these flights also had different white balance settings. So you may be able to guess from the fact that this has a different white balance, which this was. But this is the standard color profile and this is the flat color profile. And I gotta tell you, I don't see much difference in the amount of shadow detail. I just don't see much difference at all. It just seems like the feature isn't doing anything. That's a shame, but well, you know, maybe a good uh, colorist could make something of this. In fact, let's see on this next uh, example what my editor can do with uh, like a pro-level pro color grade. The footage that we're looking at here is 4K30. That's the highest resolution that the camera supports. And a lot of times for freestyle flying, and especially if you're uploading to YouTube, I don't think there's much point in going to 4K resolution uh, because the camera doesn't have enough bit rate to make it worth recording at that high resolution uh, and because YouTube doesn't really do a great job in showing you 4K footage. But that's not entirely true for the Runcam Thumb Pro. Its bit rate is actually pretty good and high enough to make 4K worth it. And I gotta say, looking at this footage, I do feel like it's better at 4K than it was at 1080p. I, I don't think, I think that a GoPro at like 1080 or 2.7K would be better than the Runcam at 4K but I think the run cam at 4K is noticeably better than the run cam at 1080. The Runcam Thumb Pro has the ability to install ND filters. And in case you don't know, an ND filter blocks light from getting into the camera, which means the shutter has to slow down and basically you get a lot of motion blur. Now this is an ND16 filter with ISO locked at 100. And frankly, I think most people would feel that this is too much motion blur and it's not actually very pleasant to look at but I wanted to really exaggerate the effect so you could see what was going on. This is a really nice feature that Runcam have implemented, and I love the way that the ND filters snap onto the lens. A lot of other camera makers friction fit them, and then as a result, they pop off while you're flying and it's useless. Now, one of the downsides of ND filters though, and the fact that I've locked the ISO, is that the camera cannot open up the exposure enough. Look, as we go through here, do you see how it's just completely dark? So this is an example of overdoing the effect, and we would want to use less ND filter, but uh, you get the idea. One of the ways that Runcam saved weight on the Thumb Pro was to leave the battery off. And that means that the camera cannot 
operate independently. If you were to compare it to something like the Insta360 Go or this is the Caddx Peanut, which is just a Caddx version of the Insta360 Go, these guys have an internal battery and if I just press record, well I don't actually think it's charged up this minute, but if I just press record it would start recording and it would run until the battery ran down. That's not going to be the case for this camera. Instead you're going to need to solder a power lead to your flight controller. And it actually comes with that power lead, but it's a little bit annoying because if you have more than one quadcopter, and many people do, you're going to need to solder a power lead to every single one of your flight controllers. And that's pretty dumb because, number one, where do you even get the power leads? I don't know. Can you buy them? Ugh. And number two, super freaking annoying to have to solder to my flight controller on every single quad that I build. Wouldn't it be better if there was some way to power it in a way that moves it from uh, from quad to quad. That's what I'm about to show you. But before I do that, can I just take a second of your time to tell you about my Patreon? Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month. If you value the content that I make, then there's a link down in the video description, and I would love it if today was the day you decided that I had earned that. $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it, the amount is totally up to you, whatever value you think you get from my content. And if that's nothing, then uh, I'm going to keep making content. Hopefully you'll keep watching it and maybe that day will come. But if today is that day, link in the video description, patreon.com. I would love to have you as a supporter. So here is what I have made. This right here is an iFlight branded power supply for a GoPro. Uh, and I have a whole video I made about this where you can take the battery out of your GoPro and run your GoPro off of USB power and save like 40 grams of weight if you decide to run a full-size GoPro. Um, but this is way more useful than just running a GoPro because this right here is a five volt regulator. A lot of people think that you're just uh, pulling power from the balance lead uh, and you're just pulling from one of the cells. That's not true. It has a literal five volt regulator in it. It outputs a regulated five volts. And what that means is that if we just take this USB connector and we snip it off, and we solder on the power lead for our Runcam Thumb Pro. Uh -huh. We can just plug it in like so. Battery. And we can just grab this battery and plug in the balance lead and the camera powers right up and it's running off of nice, safe, regulated five volts. No voltage spikes are gonna kill it. And we just need to sort of run this cable like you don't want the cable to get chopped so you kind of want to put it under the battery strap or something but we just run this cable from whatever battery we're using up to 6s voltage and down to i think 4s is the minimum it takes uh and there you go uh, so that's my solution to not having to run it off the 5 volt regulator of every flight controller that I have. I guess if you have 3s quadcopters then you're going to need to come up with some other solution. Stabilization. Is it a crutch used by cheating freestyle cheaty cheaters or is it a key tool for cinematic masters to make their videos look as good as possible? Answer, both. And who cares? Stabilization is one of the features that is missing from the Runcam Thumb Pro, sort of. Because rather than do stabilization badly, like most cheap cameras do, and then just tick a box and say they've got it, the Runcam Thumb Pro leaves stabilization to the pros. This is Gyroflow. It is a desktop app that runs on your computer and it can import the data that is exported by the Runcam Thumb Pro and use it to do a really freaking good job of stabilizing the footage. So you're not really giving up anything at all, except that you can't have in-camera stabilization. Let's just take a look at what kind of a job it does on this flight. So I'm going to import it and there is a GCSV file next to that uh, video file on the SD card. That's the gyro data that's output by the Runcam Thumb Pro that allows the stabilization to work as well as it does. Now we're getting a warning here saying the lens profile is not loaded and the results will not look correct. Uh, and the reason for that is if we just search for thumb here in the list of lens profiles, we can see that Runcam Thumb Pro doesn't have... Oh! Yes, it does. OneCam Thumb Pro 1080p 4.3. That's not the right resolution for this. Dang. Well, we're close. 
there's not a 1080 lens profile. Someone will, these are community made as well as made by the GyroFlow project. And maybe by the time you're watching this, uh, there will be a uh, profile for this resolution. Instead, I'm just gonna pick the Runcam Thumb 1080p, 60 FPS. We're just gonna pick that and it'll probably be like good enough to get the point. Then we're gonna hit the auto sync button and it'll scroll through that footage and find sync points that let it stabilize well. And a short while later, we can start to play back and we can see the stabilized footage playing back in real time. And wow, yeah, look look how it's, it's doing a lot of zooming in here. Yikes. One of the great things about GyroFlow is that it gives you so much control over the parameters of the stabilization. We can change the field of view to zoom in or out. We can change how abruptly or smoothly the stabilization happens and so on and so forth. Like for example, I prefer to have a static zoom uh, so that I don't see the image zooming in and out. If we do that, it's gonna crop in pretty far, but at least it's gonna be fairly stable. Um, oh yeah, that's nice. That's nice and smooth. Ooh. Oh, I like that a lot. Let's make it even smoother. Can we make it smoother? Like, let's just crank in the smoothness. Oh, that's too much smoothness. Because I really had to zoom in too far now to smooth it out that much. Yikes. Let's put some of these cameras on the scale and see how they stack up to each other. And we'll start with the Hero 8, the naked Hero 8, that comes in at 24 grams, 25 grams. Uh, we'll do the Cadex Peanut or Insta360 Go, basically the same thing. Comes in at 27 grams. It's got a battery built in, that's where that extra weight's coming from. The original Runcam Thumb, which didn't have the 4K resolution, comes in at just nine grams, yikes. That's amazing, incredibly light. And the Thumb Pro comes in at 14, 15 grams. I think you could make the argument that in terms of image quality per gram, this camera is the best thing going in FPV. Well, it's a pretty specific metric to focus on, but I do think it wins on that metric. Well, now it's time to vote these cameras off the island based on your potential priorities as a user. And we're gonna start with the GoPro Hero 10. This is probably the best action camera you can get today. Amazing image quality for something this size. Okay durability, but with freestyle abuse it will break. But if you can buy insurance on it, maybe you could be doing okay. And you're gonna want that insurance because the price is extraordinary. It's it's like four or $500. I don't know what it's going for exactly today. So we've got a, f a heavy $500 camera that gives great image quality. If it's too expensive or it's too heavy for you, it's out. Next, we have the Naked GoPro. And I've got a Hero 8 here. There's also Naked Hero 9s and Hero 10s. And everything I'm going to say is true about them too. The Naked GoPro is, if anything, less applicable than a full-size GoPro because it has the same image quality and the same or greater price as a full-size GoPro. It's lightweight, so that's good, but then it is super fragile and not durable at all. And like, if you're gonna crack, it's just for freestyle, no, you don't want this. The only person who's really gonna want this is somebody who needs the best image quality possible and to save that weight. Like a professional doing Cinewhoop shots, for a casual hobbyist, this is just not a good choice. Especially because you, you really can't get them with insurance. Except for the Hero 10 Bones, you can kind of get insurance, but from GoPro, but it's pretty expensive. So that's out. What about the Cadex Peanut or the Insta360 Go? They're basically the same camera. This is a really good camera and I have a review of it up on my channel. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to check it out. It is really lightweight. It's fairly durable. It has okay image quality. It has good image stabilization. It's got almost everything going for it. The main thing that is going to keep a lot of hobbyists away from it is the price. It is two or three hundred dollars depending on if you get the Cadex Peanut or the Insta360 Go, and that is a lot to ask for a camera. I mean, that's full-size GoPro prices, and they deliver a lot more. But if you need lightweight and you want good image quality in this kind of package with this kind of durability, this is an okay choice. But uh, the hypothetical person I'm imagining in this video doesn't want to spend $300 on that little freaking camera. And that leaves us 
with these two little freaking cameras, which I think are the unsung budget rock stars of the FPV hobby. You got all these pros, these rich YouTubers and professional cinema pilots, and they go out and they spend $500 on a GoPro, and then they just cricket, cricket FPV, I'm talking about you. They just smash it and take it back to Best Buy, and they don't care. But for the normal person, for the everyman on a budget, spending $110 on a Runcam 5 Orange, or I think it's $80 on this Runcam Thumb Pro, is much more palatable and delivers a lot more value. This isn't a review of the Runcam 5 Orange. I have a link to that, and I'll put it in the video description as well. Uh, but um, uh, if you need something with a battery built in, Runcam 5 Orange, very, very good value for money. And if you want something even lighter and you're okay with no battery built in, the Runcam Thumb Pro. You saw the footage. Are you happy with it? Is that worth 80 bucks to you? There's links down in the video description where you can pick it up. Uh, and by the way, those links in the video description, they're affiliate links. What that means is that when you click that link, you go to the store and you make any purchase. You buy this camera, you can buy anything. Just click the link before you do your shopping. It gives me a small commission for sending you to the store, and it's a great way for you to help me out. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just puts a little money in my pocket. What if you wanted to see what GoPro would come up with if they decided to make a naked camera? This is the GoPro Hero 10 Bones, and I'm going to put a card on screen with my review for it. This is really eye-opening. Um, what you get. And I also have a comparison to the uh, Runcam 5 Orange in there so you can see how the image quality of high-end professional cameras stacks up to something like this Runcam. I also did one of the funniest intros to one of my videos that I think I've ever done. I'll put a card on screen. You can go check that out and see what do you get if you pay 500 bucks for a high-end naked GoPro compared to this little $80, $100 camera. Maybe you'll be impressed. Here's that card.